Hey folks, I'm going to show you some things about how CSS connects with HTML and the link between the two and that they work together and what the two different languages are actually doing that are distinct and why we need them both. Okay, so we're going to keep up with our little uh, project on uh, computer hardware parts, okay, and we're going to use that as our uh, environment that we're going to we're going to kind of look at this in. Okay, so I'm going to do some screen share, and we're going to get into our replet here, and I've got a few uh, I've got I've got a few lines here, um, same same little project we've been working with, okay. The HTML is down here, or well, well, it's all through, actually. The tags are, um, the whole page is an HTML page, okay? But down in the body, we, of course, have some tags that give us our buttons here, okay? And I've got a separate section down here, sort of set aside with a, with a comment. This is some comment. Uh, Characters. The, these. Uh, this is a. This is an HTML comment, which means that this code will not be. Um, this code will not be in, uh, interpreted or processed by the browser. It's just there for people to see to take sort of put some notes into their uh, web page so they can remind themselves of things or. Uh, refer to things within the code without it actually being part of the code. Okay, so in this section called the picture section, I'm going to go ahead and put a new tag that we haven't looked at before. This is, this is a new tag, a div tag. It's short for division. And it uh, is just a box on the web page. It creates just a square box or, or a rectangle on the web page. It's always a rectangle. What's in it may not always be a rectangle, but the div itself is always a rectangle, okay? Um, so I'm going to put a div on here, and I'm going to put an image tag in here. It's RC equals, and I'm going to go up here and use one of these images that I've already got uploaded um, from here. Where we can upload files into Replit, okay? And they they are uh, available then in our in our little program, okay. But I've got several loaded. I put them into an images folder, okay. And again, I'm going to reiterate the importance of making this path uh, for. Uh, let's give it a size. Let's give it a width. Let's do 200 pixels. And we can close that, and I can then close the div, okay? So a div has an opening and a closing tag, okay? So right there, I'm going to let you take a look at how this looks now when we get done, okay? All right, look. Let's get this thing out of the way. Let's get, well, that's me. That's not bad, okay? So I like that, okay? You can see that. All right, and I'm going to run this. And there's what we get. Okay, now by default, HTML is it does what's called relative positioning, and that means that everything in the web page, everything in the body, is placed and displayed in the page straight from the very top left corner. So it's gonna it's gonna it's gonna uh, place everything straight across the page. And then when it runs out of room, it's going to drop down and start doing more across the page at the next uh, line of stuff, okay, whatever you have in your web page, pictures, headlines, text, um, other files that you could link to, that kind of thing, okay? So as you're, the reason these are like they are, that this has dropped down and there's a space in between here is because of these BR tags, which is breaking space tags, okay? So those breaking space tags, um, will separate, they'll, they'll force the next item to go down uh, to the next level on the page and, and start again from the left-hand side. 
same thing with the picture. Okay, now this is you've got two BR tags right here between this RAM button, which is right here. Uh, where does it say RAM? Value equals RAM. Let's close this up just a little bit. So that looks like it's all on one line. Okay, value equals RAM. That gives you the RAM button, and then you've got two BR tags, two breaking space tags, and so this picture just drops down again to the next level and is all the way on the left hand side on, on the edge of the, the browser window for, for the for replic. Okay. Now what's going on here is relative positioning. That's not really what we want to be able what we want to do. That's that's not everything we want to be able to do. So we're going to talk about styling today. And we have been doing styling in our inside of our tags. And say for an image, we might would put um, a style attribute in here. And I know we, we did a table before and you, we were putting uh, a style attribute into the TD tags or the table tag. And, and we could say equals and then we could list a, several different styles like the width of a, of a table cell or the, the background color of a table cell or the color like for the font of a table cell or maybe the border for a table cell. We could set that uh, individually for each table cell using the, the style attribute. Okay, but for this, um, we're going to do our styling um, not in not in line. It's not going to be in the tags it, themselves, which is called inline style. We're going to do what's called internal style. And that means it's still within the page. It's still within the, the HTML file, but it's all gathered in the head between an opening style tag and a closing style tag. Now I'm a little old fashioned and I still put in my opening style tag type equals text slash CSS. And that sort of helps me um, remember not that I forget, but um, I think it's good to just have that as a visual that yes, this is the style. This is going to be where the CSS stuff goes. Okay. Now what we're going to do is put, um, we're going to put our styling rules up here, our properties and values up here. And the way this is done is by giving our div some, now, now the, there are several different ways to set the style up here. Okay. One is by the element and we could style all divs a certain way. Okay. If we wanted all divs to have a blue background, we could, we could do that. And that's what we would use. If we wanted all divs, or, or if we wanted to use a certain grouping of divs, and we could give the, those divs, those particular divs, a class, okay? And we could style just some divs with an orange background and some with a green background. And we might have a green class and an orange class of divs. We're not going to do that either right now. We're going to use IDs for this. IDs are unique. Um, every single item that gets an ID on a web page needs to be unique for that web page. Okay, so I'm going to do an ID equals uh, pick underscore CPU. And that's going to be for this picture of a CPU. We're going to do computer parts. That's what we're doing. And the first one is the CPU, the brain of the computer. Okay, so I give it an ID right here inside the div tag. That ID is an attribute. You can tell that because it's got an equal sign right after it and it, it's got an equal sign right after it and it's got in quotes, the name of the ID or, or the ID itself. Okay. The value for the ID. Okay. So I have to stick with that. I have to use that same ID up here and I'm going to indicate that it's an ID by a hash mark and I'm going to put a hash mark right here. Okay. And I'm going to put pick underscore C P underscore C P U. Now, that's great. We've got our, um, we've got the ID set. We've identified which div, which is only one right now, but we'll have a dozen on here eventually for this little project. Okay. We've got that set, but we need to enclose 
the all the properties that we're going to set here within opening and closing curly brackets. Okay, so that's fine. That that works. Okay, that that in fact is complete, and we're not really changing anything. That, that doesn't really change anything. Okay, but what we're going to do now is start setting properties. The first one we want to set is, is to set the pos position to absolute, okay? Then we're going to set the top property to, let's just say 50 pixels. Then I'm going to set the left property to 225 pixels, okay? And then I'm going to set the width to 200 pixels. That's going to give this picture, th this div that contains this picture, and, and they're two separate things. The picture is, the picture is is being held inside the image tag itself, okay? But the div holds the picture, holds the image tag. So we're we're setting the width of the div, okay? And that's what's going to happen. So. So that works, okay? Now that's going to reposition this, and let's let's check it out. And there it is, okay? So that's more where we want it. We want it a little out of the way. I want to have enough room here to put a, a list of buttons for different computer parts. Some of them are going to be longer names, like motherboard is a longer name, and it's going to stick out a little farther. So I don't want my pic it running into the picture, okay? Now that works. That's pretty good. I like that. Um, that lets you see uh, the picture where we want it to be on the web page. And it's all because of this position absolute property being set. Okay, and then we gave it a top and a left. When we give it top and a left, that means it's 50 pixels from the top and 225 pixels from the left. Okay, the top, let me, let me draw this on the board. Right back here, okay. So on the board here, let's get them on. You've got, we always have, you, you've got a div. Now you may not be able to see this. Okay, that marker is dead. You might not be able to see this on the, 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 um, on, on, on your web page when you're, when you're displaying it. But the div is there and it's always a box. Okay, and you might have a picture of something. Okay, that top left position is where that's where position is is, um, is is taken from for a web page for, for a web page I, a, a div on a web page. You've got a you've got a top. How far down is it from the top? And you've got how far in is it from the left? Okay. On a web page, if this was your browser window, that's zero zero. Zero from the left, zero from the top, right there. Okay. I know you can't see that very well. Let's let's make that more visible. Okay. Zero zero at the very very top of the browser window. Okay. So what we have right here is 50 and 225, and it's about that position right there. Whatever whatever the the uh, the box corner is. Okay. All right. So. That looks good. I, I like this. I want you to add the rest of your items on here. Okay. So I need, in addition to your to your 12 buttons that you're going to have. Okay. I need the rest of your um, div divs that are going to hold the pictures. Okay. So what I'm going to do right here is copy this and paste it in here three times. I'm just going to do a little sample of this, okay? Um, this one is going to be for the RAM picture. Oops. And this one's going to be for the GPU, the graphics processor unit. Okay, so we're going to put RAM right here. And this is going to be the GPU right here. Okay. They're all the same size. I'm going to make them all the same size, okay? That's going to keep my stuff consistent. Uh, for, for right now, that the, the depth may change, okay? I'm not setting the height, I'm just setting the width. Um, and we can alter that if we need to, and we might need to later. Um, 
I think it's probably more most important that we keep these the same, the, the uh, top left corner the same, and then if they get bigger, they uh, go off to the right and down, and they're not in the way of the buttons. Okay, so we'll we'll handle that as we get to it. Uh, but that'll that'll set that up. Now these are not. Let's see what that does. Okay, these two, these second two that I put in, do not have any styling attached to them. There's no styling attached like there is up here. Okay, so what I want to do is take this right here, and copy it and put it in here twice. And I'm going to change this one to pick underscore RAM and pick underscore GPU. Now they're fine. Now they're all in position. The GPU is on top. Okay, so another thing about CSS. Uh, the last thing listed gets on top. Okay, there are other languages that it's, it's the opposite of that. But, but for HTML, for the browsers, the last thing listed in the body gets on top. Okay, so I like this. What I don't like is the fact that um, I can see an item underneath here that's not part of the GPU. Okay, I don't like that. That's not what we want to do. Okay, so my suggestion to take care of that is going to be to put a background color in here for the entire div itself. And you'll see how this is going to work. And I'm just going to put green for now. Okay, uh, let's do them all. And right here. Okay, and let's see what that does. All right, so what that's doing here for, for us, okay, is um, that's giving that there's not enough room left after the image fills up the div. In fact, the, the image might be bigger than the div and it might be pushing the size of it out, okay, to the point that there's no, there's no uh, background area left to be filled with color. So I'm, I'm going to go in here. Uh, let's see, I left off the semicolon there, so we don't want to do that. I'm going to go in here and put a height as well. Okay, so H E I G H T, and that height is going to be I'm going to say 185 pixels. Okay, so I'm just going to take that and copy that as well. Control C and then Control V, and I'm going to try to see what that looks like. Okay, so there we go. Now that that um, fills in the background so that I can't see any other components back there. And no matter which component is on top, if when we get to the point where we're switching these out, which is what we want to do, okay, no matter which component is on top, the background covers everything behind it, okay, and and no, no other component can be seen underneath the top component, which is what we want, okay. Ultimately, we want to be able to click on the button for the correct com computer part, have the computer. We're going to use JavaScript in a later video to switch the position of that particular button's picture to the top. Okay, that's, that's what we want to do. And I'm going to do that. Um, I'm going to change this background color to white. You could put white in here. I'm going to use the hexadecimal number. Instead of green, just the term green. I'll do it right here too. You can you can put white in there, the word white if you want to, but I think it's kind of cool to do the hexadecimal number if you know it. Okay, so there you go. All right, now, now, now the big deal about this with C with internal CSS is getting this connection set up between the style rules or or the the properties, the styling properties, and their items that they're supposed to be styling. They're selectors. That they're, these are called selectors. That's what the, these things right here are called. Okay. What their selectors are. Okay. So in this case, they're all IDs of divs. Divs are 
uh, typically used to position things perfectly to the pixel, okay, and or or even to the percentage, which we will get to and and start doing is it before long. But uh, for right now, this div has an ID. That ID is referred to up here and the picture shows up, okay? Now, another thing I wanna throw in here and I wanna prep you up on, okay? I'm gonna set the Z-index property and I'm gonna set them all to one. We're gonna need this later. You're, you're gonna need it. You're gonna need it, okay? There you go. Oops, that was a screw up. There we go, okay. So that, that's not gonna change anything right now, but we're gonna use that soon. Now watch this. Right now the GPU is on top, okay? That's this one. And it's the last one listed. And so it, it would be the one that's on top. That's the normal HTML flow of things. If you don't control it, given a Z index, and this, this, these are all the same Z index. So if they're all the same, the last one listed is gonna be the one on top. Okay, so I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go back up here to the first one listed, and I'm gonna change that Z index to, to two. Okay, and see what happens. Now there you go. The CPU is back on top. That's because we put it on top. Okay, now we're not gonna leave that at two for right now. What we're gonna do soon is write some JavaScript that will change that Z index. And that's what we're, that's the mechanism we're gonna use to alter this. Okay, so we'll, we'll talk about that um, in another video. I just wanted to make the connection with you for internal CSS written in the head, written in the, between the opening style tag and the closing style tag, okay? Um, that's very important to, to make that connection. And, and there's two components now, okay? Let, let's, let's, let's do this on the board. There's two components to get this into a position, okay? There's the, there's the CSS, okay? And that's the, um, that's the styling part. Okay, and you're gonna set the, uh, uh, the top, the left, the width, height, anything else, you know, background, color. Okay, that's all set with CSS. You have to have that component. That's the hash mark. That's the brackets. That's the colons between the property names and the values. Anytime you see this stuff, you're looking at CSS. Okay, you're not looking at HTML. Okay, secondly, you have to have another part. You have to have, you have, to have the HTML. HTML. Yeah, this is in the. This is going to be in the body. This is for the display. Just get it on the screen. That's what it does. Okay. Get this on the screen. This is where you're going to have angle brackets. You're going to have um, a div, typically. Okay. In this case, you're going to have an ID. There are other things that you could have. That's a that's an attribute. That you're going to have quotes. You don't uh, quotes are, are are different over here. They're used for something. That just slow. They they do quotes can contain values in CSS. Okay, but they're definitely used in HTML. You see them quite a bit. Okay. All right. So there's two components here that you have to have in order to get this thing to show up where you want to and how you want it to. The CSS part, okay. Let's do this. I want to make this really clear, okay. And the HTML part. This is really, this is the first part, really, okay. This is the second part. Not to have it. Okay. That's real. That's pretty critical. Okay, for you to understand that. That's 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 what we're talking about. Uh, embedding CSS into HTML. Okay. All right. 
Um, let's go back to the scene, screen share. And that's where, we're, that's where we're heading. Okay, I need 12 of these in here, not just three. Same thing up here. I need 12 of these in here, all stacked up on top of each other, one underneath the other. Shouldn't be able to see them underneath. Background color should be white. Okay. Uh, Z index, just set them all the same. Set them low, like number one. Okay, it doesn't really matter uh, what number you start with. Okay, but um, I, I think I'm going to, uh, yeah, you actually might, let's see. Actually, that's okay. That'll, that'll be fine. That'll, that'll be fine. We can do this a few different ways, but that'll be fine. Okay. All right, so that's that lesson. I appreciate it. Uh, if you've got questions, we'll answer them. Uh, you can you can post me a question, uh, and I'll I'll try to take a look at that and get you some answers. But that looks um, like this. That'll wrap this up for right now.